OK, what we're going to do now is we're going to continue our discussion of the Hammer framework. And we're going to talk specifically about the Android Handler class. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll talk about what the underlying concurrency idioms and programming mechanisms are for using handlers and how that gets translated into the Hammer framework. So handlers are basically the means of allowing the sending of messages and the uh, sending and processing of messages and the posting and processing of runnables. And that's the target by which you use to send these things into the Hammer framework. And we'll talk about that. And there's a message queue under the hood that gets involved as well. Keep in mind that every looper has a message queue. Remember we talked about that last time. We talked about loopers. And they all have message queues. And the message queues are used to process messages and runnables placed on the queue by one or more threads. So, so somehow you, know, you, you get these things on the, on the, the queue. And, and handlers are the means to do this. And so uh, a message queue is managed internally by a handler, getting stuff onto the message queue and actually getting stuff to be processed once it's taken off the message queue is done by something called a handler. So it's basically used to add stuff into the queue, occasionally remove stuff if you don't want to process it. If you discover later, I don't really want to process this anyway, you can use a handler to take it off the queue. And it also is used internally to dispatch messages to their intended targets. Now, I use the word messages a lot of places here when I actually mean messages or handlers. And the reason for this is that Android simply encapsulates runnables in messages. So when we use messages, it's messages or messages that encapsulate runnables. All right, a handler is associated with a particular looper. By default, it's the looper in which the handler was created, which unless you, you do some things to the contrary, is usually the main thread, the user interface thread. Of course, you can spawn other threads and create handlers in there, and then they'll be associated with those threads. How does that work under the hood? What's the means by which we associate handlers with the thread they're created in? Does anybody remember the, the magic trick in Java or the pattern? So thread local storage is what the Java mechanism is called. It's the thread specific storage pattern. Yep. So by default, if you don't do anything else, if it'll go to the thread you created in. You're, it's also possible to give a looper to the handler's constructor. And there are situations where that gets used. We'll perhaps have time to talk about that later. There are two main things that a handler does. The first thing it does is it sends messages and it posts runnables to the thread's looper. So you can either use send message, which passes a message to the appropriate handler's looper, or you can post runnables. And we'll compare and contrast the different approaches and, and see which one you would prefer to use and why. Irrespective of whether you send a message or you post a runnable, because it's all the same mechanism under the hood very quickly, as we'll see, these things get stuck into the looper's message queue, and then they're scheduled for future execution. And, and that's not just a you know, scheduling is not just a turn of the phrase. It, it actually does schedule them based on things like time and other stuff like that. So things are scheduled various ways. Uh, so you enqueue the message into the message queue at the appropriate time in the future, which could be, you know, in FIFO order. There may not be any time. And that always then gets processed by the, res the thread that is associated with the handler that you sent the stuff to. So what the handler does, once, it, once the messages have been given to it, or the runnables have been given to it, it then sits there in collaboration with the looper to serialize the processing of messages in a thread. And we'll see how this code works in a second. But bottom line is, you're running in a handler thread somewhere where it's in a looper. And remember, it's calling looper.loop. .loop. And as we looked at before, looper.loop sits there pulling messages out of the message queue. And as soon as it gets a message out of the message queue, it says to the message, go find your target, which is your handler, and have that guy dispatch the appropriate thing. And we'll look at a little bit of that code here in a second. Each message and runnable, of course, keeps track of the handler that's associated with it. So each message has a target, which is the handler. And we'll see how the, that gets set in a few minutes, too. If you follow the rules, if you do everything according to uh, what you're supposed to do, the concurrency control is simplified because you only have one thread that's ever going to process a given message. 
So that that's an event loop, event loop driven approach or a message pump or you know some kind of dispatching loop or something. That's the kinds of designs that those things have. In Android, most of the time you use this mechanism for background threads to communicate to the user interface thread. 99 times out of 100, that's what you do. There's no reason, however, you can't have arbitrary threads sending messages back and forth to each other. That's not as common of a thing to do, but it's certainly doable. So you can have a situation where you've got threads with handlers passing messages and runnables to each other so that they get processed in the appropriate place. And of course, there's a whole pile of patterns that are used. And the two most important ones in this context are the command processor pattern and the active object pattern. And we'll look at both of those patterns. OK, so let's take a look at some of the methods. The handler class has a lot of methods in it. There's about two dozen methods, of which I just showed a few here. We'll cover them all, or cover many of them. There are four main categories, using superhero metaphors to convey four. <laughs> um, and some of the methods deal with posting and removing runnables. This is just some of them, but you'll, we'll talk about them in more detail. So post and remove runnables. And you can see that you can either post them without, um, it post them in a way where there's no timing related, or you can post them to run after a certain amount of time. So that's where the scheduling comes in. So you can do timed runnables. The handler and its thread local looper dequeue each runnable and dispatch its run hook method. So there's a method on handler calls dispatch method, and we'll see how that works. And what happens here is that the thread that's doing this gets the message, goes and finds its runnable, and then calls the run hook method on the runnable. And that, of course, runs in the thread that's running the event loop. You can also send and remove messages. So once again, you got send and remove. <coughs> These are used to insert and delete messages into the message queue. You can do timed messages, just like you could do timed runnables. And the message contains a bunch of data that's processed by the handle message hook method. So there's a, a method called handle message, and that's what's going to be used to to do the actual dispatching. That's the guy that handles the message. That's a little bit different. We'll see. We'll talk about this more later uh, when we get into the usage considerations. But with runnable, when you post a runnable, when you make the call, you typically create the work to be done at the point where you make the call. You use a closure or a local mm -hmm. class instance. With sending messages, there's a sender and a receiver. And those are two different things. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Some other things you can do, you can, you can obtain messages. So there's a bunch of factory methods. These factory methods are used to get you a message. And these messages come out of a pool of messages that are able to be recycled. So they get reused, which speeds them up. And you can find out a little bit more about where this stuff comes from by reading this link. Then the last thing that's provided, some of which is hidden from you, but it's, it's interesting to see how it works, is dispatching and handling the messages. So keep in mind that. Dispatching and handling works for both messages and for runnables, but it's called message because that's the generic enclosure that everything resides in. So you can see that the dispatch method is used for both messages and runnables. Here's what the code looks like. Here's what dispatch method message looks like if you were to go and look inside the implementation in handler.java. So what it does is if the message callback is not null, it calls this method called handle callback. And we'll look at this method in a minute. But that ends up doing a runnable. That calls the run method. Otherwise, if it is null, then it checks to see if the callback is null. There's also this callback thing. And then that can be used. And that's a way so you don't actually have to subclass from handler. You can use a callable instead. Or callback, rather, not a callable callback. And then finally, if none of those things are true, it calls the handle message hook method on handler, which implies you've extended it. And that's what handle message does. So subclasses, if they choose, can implement this message to receive the methods, receive the messages sent via send message. And in any case, in either, either case, whether it's messages or runnables and so on, the callback takes place in the thread that's running the event loop. So even if the callback comes from a different thread, when you do send message or post or whatever, it's the thread that the handler belongs to that actually does the dispatching of this stuff. And the active object pattern gives you a bit more of a feel for that. All right, so we're not going to cover all these things right now. We're going to wait till the next couple modules. 
Um, but I will give you a little bit of overview of the handler usage considerations. So what's the, the typical use case in Android? So the typical use case in Android is to have background threads do long running processing, typically kicked off as a result of various things like uh, executor framework. You could start up stuff by saying execute or you could spawn a thread directly or whatever you want to do or you could use other things. And when you're done with your long duration processing, you then call post or send message to get the results back to the user interface thread. That's by far the most common, uh, most common use case. So you can perform operations concurrently. You can coordinate the behavior of various things. Uh, the Hammer framework gives the handler class to support these use cases. We talked about that. Um, one of the interesting things about this, by the way, is that if you use the Hammer framework, and this also goes, by the way, for the async task framework, you just about never have to use the Java synchronization mechanisms directly. So as a, as a rule of thumb, if, if you're using these things consistently in your program, all the stuff we talked about with respect to reentrant lock and condition objects and all this other good stuff just sort of disappear, which is good and bad, right? It means there's less work to do, but it also might mean that maybe your program isn't as scalable or there might be some other downsides. So as usual, you know, as you climb the levels of abstraction, you get simplified application development once you understand the abstractions, but there may be some overhead relative to writing at a lower level but I would expect it would be minimal for most of the use cases. Now, you know, in addition to having background threads send stuff to the user interface thread, threads can also send messages or post runnables to itself. The most typical reason for, do th for doing this is to defer processing. Let's say you're doing something and you're doing some work and you get to a point where you're like, I can't make any more progress or you know, I don't want to block or whatever. You can create a message and then enqueue it uh, using post or send, send message or post, in order to be able to process it again at some later point in time. So that's, that's another not atypical use case, although it's not quite as interesting from a concurrency point of view because it's not really doing things concurrently. Background threads can also interact via handlers. We showed that example before, so they don't have to be the user interface thread. So when would you decide to use a runnable versus using a message? What would be the criteria for which you might decide? And there's a couple of different reasons. Typically, you use post methods or the run on user interface thread method, which is just a front end to post, as we'll see in the next slides. Um, these are used when, sender, when senders know the operation they want to perform. So if there's some reason why the sender knows what needs to be done and it wants to you know, sort of kick things off and then have the completion take place in a different context, in a different thread, then you would use a runnable. Because all you have to do is just come along here and define an anonymous inner class, which just defines a run method, and you make a new runnable. So that's pretty cool. Conversely, send message makes more sense when it's the receiver that knows what to do with the, the uh, work that's being given to it. So the sender might not really know what to do. It just knows something needs to be done. So it creates a message with a request in it, plus some other data. And it goes ahead and it sends it over to the receiver. And then the receiver takes it and does something to that. So it's a little bit more flexible in some ways. Handlers are used all over the place in Android and its frameworks. Handler, Hammer framework uses it all the time. Um, and we'll talk more about that. The async task framework also uses it. But the async task framework kind of hides things so you don't actually see handlers as an application developer. But inside the, hand, the async task framework, there's handlers lurking around for all the, the obvious reasons that we'll look at when we get to that point. Probably, um, maybe Wednesday, hopefully. And there's other places to go. There's a guy named um, Lars uh, Vogel who has some interesting tutorials on Android concurrency that might be worth taking a look at. They're uh, kind of advanced. He, he sort of jumps into the middle of something expecting people to know some of the background, but there's some good examples and some good insights there. <laughs>